Hello, Buy Round listeners. Welcome to the latest edition of Midweek Ma- Matters with me, James Graham, and Charlie White. What's going on, Jimmy? You forget uh, my name there for a sec. No, I just wanted you to introduce okay, yourself. Yep, you know, sometime, sometimes I intro you, sometimes you just got to keep things fresh in life. Keep things fresh, yeah. Good call. Um, good call. Yeah, the season is back tonight. Tonight, we are all the, the waiting is over. Uh, just to clarify, uh, the video that we put out on Instagram, that, that isn't me actually running downstairs to my parents. <laughs> That's uh, I, I think a crazy Everton fan from a few years ago, but uh, a video that has stayed with me for a long time, but it always always makes me laugh. But yeah, this like... It feels like Christmas, doesn't it? It, it, it does, matter, And you know what? Like, it, it's a bit weird being an, a former player. The season's back and you get, not mixed emotions, but it's kind of, you're glad that you're not, having to go through this again but then you're a bit like i kind of miss it yeah like you miss that anticipation that feeling of hope like all these different feelings going on and what do you do game day for round one is it like the guys get together they have coffee and breakfast together or is everyone sort of keep themselves and i th- it, it, it depends charlie it depends yeah. um like if you're just playing a home game you'll try and keep the the preparation as as usual and if you're away yeah you'd go and do your usual breakfast walk. I, the, the, there is no difference um, in the in the prep for round one. You, you you try and get into your usual routine, but it's but it is a strange feeling because oh, have you done your trials? You hopefully got through injury free, and then it's like oh, we're we're playing for keeps and all this, and it's a better week as well. Mm. Because well, I say that it's a better week. Some sometimes coaches will try and. Um, ambush you with a bit of a, a pre-season day on like the Monday or the Tuesday and you're like we're playing this week sometimes it's like no it's going to be it's proper game week so we're going to treat this we, we're not going to flog yet on the Monday right but very very strange feeling going into it as a player yeah and the fans oh my god you speak to, you speak to some of them well everyone's this, thinking they're going to win aren't they everyone's got their mate, hopes there and up. they are desperate it's like it's like a drug, and you can see they need their football fix, and they're pulling, <laughs> pulling the belt on the arm, and get trying to find a vein. It's like inject me yeah. with some football because, yeah, we've had the World Cup, we've had the trials, but th- they just want their club football back. They do, but I have got actually a little bit of a bone to pick with you because you're obviously in our new studio here, it's in. It's not not as hard to park here as it was in our previous one, mm-hmm. but as we were just sort of pulling up into the spots. Um, you're obviously parked there, and would you would you consider yourself a generous parker for the other people around you, or do you consider yourself sort of selfish? Uh, I think I would consider myself quite a considerate parker. Yeah, right. Why? Okay. Well, obviously parking's a premium, mm. and uh, we just sort of rolled in, and you were at the edge of yeah. the sign. Well, you should have been at the edge. You were about a meter and a half in front of the edge, so not really room for any car to come behind you, and then in front. You then made it so there was not enough space for a car to fit in between you and the other car. And to be honest, mate, it's quite disgraceful behaviour. <laughs> Maybe your timing. So you're just looking at the situation as it is. So you're looking at it through those eyes. Where yeah. Maybe the situation when I parked was different. Charlie. But I'm almost so certain we were a minute so after maybe, you. Maybe you don't know that. That that was the order, or that was the sequence of cars. Perhaps I've just pulled in behind another car, and they have since left. Had you well, the only that, that doesn't explain it though, because there's not enough room for a car. But there would have been enough room a for smart a car, car if you had, or maybe a motorbike, or maybe a motorbike. But we were so you're creating this world where there was a smart car, a motorbike, and all that sort of stuff. We were about a minute after you because you texted us let's, just we were parking. Let's saying, go and check the CCTV we'll, footage we'll, I'm happy if we to. can get access I'm happy to that to. somewhere. We can. Put this Captain debate Cook to bed. Hotel might be able to help us with that. <laughs> I, for that, I apologise. But here's the thing: I thought I was running late, but you know, some of us were on time, some of us were late. No, but anyway, well, it's a busy like, week. The footy's here. Yes, we we are very busy. Um, the first thing I want to start with is the competition. How actually wide open is it? You talk about that fan excitement, but like Penrith, they have come back to the pack a little bit. They've been far and away the best team the last few years. Roosters, some question marks are emerging now. Obviously, Angus Crichton, we don't know what's happening there. Um, Joey Manu's face, he's, it's, we don't know what's happening there. Luke Keery's concussion, there's some question marks around that. So maybe they're not as clear a contender as we think. There seems to be 
now a real opportunity for teams like the Rabbitohs, the Sharks, the Cowboys to actually maybe make a run at winning the comp. It feels so wide open. Well, mate, I say this about our sport all the time. We are the closest competition in the world with all sport, sports, bar none. Mm. It, it, it really is. Like We have the most potential winners, the, the highest percentage of potential winners, by an absolute country mile. It it is so close. Even, you know, trying to pick a top not even trying to pick a winner, but trying to pick a top eight. You know, there's there's genuinely, you know, like I I've gone through my top eight and it's like top fifteen. How, how can you leave this team out? Yeah. Like and you know you're gonna get criticized. And you know you're gonna get egg on your face at the come the end of the year and like, ah. Oh, I didn't miss them. But that is the thing. It's like normally there's so many clear teams that are going to be bad. This year it's like everyone's tipping the Dragons, it feels like, for the wooden spoon. But like the Bulldogs are better. The Tigers are better. The Titans are better. The Warriors, maybe they're better. They've got yeah. some good forwards coming in. Like New coach playing at home, yeah. stability, like a lot of emotion. The funny thing is, though, it could be like round three and we go, oh, they're shit. They're yeah, shit, yeah, they're yeah. Shit. Well, but, mate, it, it will. It, yeah. it, it will happen where you go, oh, because teams are going to have to lose. Yeah. And... You know, it's you take pride in your performance, but there will be some bad losses and it will look obvious. And there'll be certain teams that are more equipped at making a sort of early season, mid season transition, but there's some teams that aren't equipped to do that. And we're probably going to talk about that in our uh, season preview for a couple of those teams. And you talk about how the salary cap keeps this competition wide open. On NRL 360, Paul Crawley has called for players' salaries to become public. Um, which is a kind of a contentious issue. It's fairly common practice in a lot of sports outside of Australia. Like it obviously happens in NBA, NFL, baseball. So um, hang on, you're saying it's fairly common practice. I'll tell you where it's common practice. Mm -hmm. America. Yeah. But it, I mean, football's normally we get a pretty good idea of, of what someone's getting paid though in yeah. the English Premier League as well. Yeah, but we have, a pre we have you know, rumour and innuend innuendo about players' salaries here. There's yeah. not an actual definitive thing. But in, I hang on a minute. I'll actually. I've the got the Premier a, League. Yeah, but the Premier League doesn't have a salary cap as well. No. It so doesn't. these American sports have salary caps. Is Super League public? No. No. I think Do, IP, IPL. Does Super League have a salary cap? To, yes. Like, it's yes. Bit, yeah? yes, it Very does. Strict? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, IPL does. I think that, that they would. In cricket? Yeah, they publish yeah, their salary. They pub, yeah, yeah, yeah. publicise their salary, but. Obviously, not the whole salary of the cricket is from Cricket Australia. I don't know. Like, what, why do we look to America all the time? But like, th yeah, they have some great examples of how sports should be done. But I don't know. For, for, for me personally, it, it's quite a rude thing to ask someone how much they earn. It is if you're asking someone on the street. But I guess when you're doing a, a position in the public eye, it's not as rude, is it? it I, I guess not. But I guess my immediate thought is to like well what are the benefits of this like why why do we need to know if we have a rough idea anyway what is the benefit of um you know the public knowing that the base salary of of each player well it's just for that transparency and then you take out all that bs of some teams cheating the salary cap some teams no not. you don't and you don't. But you do because you got, you, you you've do, got you the don't. numbers Charlie, there. You, you, you don't. But then if you don't take rid of it, maybe it is more obvious if some team, like if a player isn't getting what they're meant to be getting. Maybe then you go, hang on a minute. Dom Young's just signed for the Roosters for 250, but he was offered 600. Yeah, What's but going then, on there? Well, well, so, uh, well, so, you know, with, with all due respect, a fan is going to do all that working out themselves and call the NRL and go, hey, have you seen this? And they're going, oh, no, I didn't work that out. <laughs> we should get you on the box. <laughs> That's a fair point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I know what you mean so, with that. So this, the, the, the salaries are, obviously the contracts get registered with the NRL. Yeah. So they do their job and they would look at it and go, you know, I think Matt Lodge last year when he came to the Roosters, he had to be paid a certain wage. So they're, they're already doing that. I just think, I, I personally, I, I know fans out there would, would, would want to know, but I just think it's irrelevant information. And it, and it, for me, it opens the door to more abuse of the players because of, you know, the 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 action. You know, it's definitive there. But you could also reverse that and say, 
it also creates a lot of positive for some players who might be underpaid and they go, wow, this guy's only, he's worth, he's worth 750 easy. Well, you know that that would, that would happen where players would be, you know, going through with a fine tooth comb going like, <laughs> yeah, he's on the same as he's me. He's robbing and lifting. Yeah. What about internally? Because do players talk about what they're on amongst each other? Or is that kind of like, because I know working in office, you don't normally go, oh, I'm on, I'm on this, you're on that, okay. Like it might sometimes, people you're quite close with, you might like tell them what you're getting paid. But most of the time people keep that private. Is it a little bit like that in the NRL world? Yeah, you know, you'd always give, if, you know, say for example, Ben Hunt, like yeah. we are always giving him grief about what he's earning, but he'd never be like, oh, be like, oh, it's not that. Yeah, you know, right. no, no, no one. I don't think anyone's ever like brash about what they're earning. Yeah, or if someone like, "Mate, boys, I'm only on two hundred. <laughs> Give me <Right>. more. <laughs> Come on." Um, no, I, I nah, think, it's m- quite I think, private. I think, yeah, it's it's pretty private. So, do you reckon then, if you did reveal it, you could create sort of maybe it's bad like friction, bad vibes and friction? Mate, yeah, huge amount of friction. Yeah, like you imagine, you know, and it. it it it's I think it opens up too big a can, too big of a can of worms. You know, you can imagine what it's like. Oh, I'm playing every week. This guy's not. He's out of form. Mm. Like, why is he getting that? And I'm not like, well, you know, I guess it would well, help it, people negotiate. Yeah, it would. It, it would. it would. It would increase people's negotiating power. But then, you know, you you at the end of the day you sign the deal yeah and also but your manager can probably using context find out what the other course. person in your club's getting paid anyway of, co- of course or sometimes the manager might be managing the other player and go geez he's getting this my other guy should be getting that as yeah, well yeah yeah or, or well you know within the managers yeah they'd be calling around seeing seeing who's on unders and going mate i'll get you more than that yeah well let's move on to the We'll agree or disagree on that, but let's move on to the season previews because we're doing today the Dogs, the Raiders, the Warriors, and the Dragons. Now, we'll start with the Dogs because there's a fair bit of news around the Bulldogs. Really sad news for, I'm sure, your former teammate, Luke Thompson. Um, Now there's some question marks over if the injury is actually the full season, but a Liz Frank injury. Um, The swelling's too bad at the moment to know if they're going to have surgery or not, Um, but... Gus Gould initially said six months. Now he's saying twelve to fifteen weeks. He just can't catch a break, Luke. Yeah, he's um, he's he's had a difficult time with injury and suspension and quality of roster when he first came over. Um, Luke Thompson's one of the best props in the game, and if um, he perhaps would have uh, come over at a different time, we'd have seen the best of him. I'm. I'm I was so frustrated when I seen the frustrated for him when I seen the news about this season-ending injury on the on the eve of you know round one. But I, I actually messaged him yesterday, and he's very confident that it's not going to be as long. Some good news come from that, so um, I think I expect to see him sort of early to mid-season, which is which fantastic. is fantastic news yep. for him because he needs to show what he's all about. You know, just, we've seen in glimpses. But he's just not managed to have like a real good run of form. I really like what the Bulldogs are going to be about this year. I'm confident um, in their ability. They're very competent, but it's about having that confidence and adapting to new, you know, new systems under Cam. They have brought new players in, but you know, there's still some players there that are probably a bit scarred from the past couple of years. So it's important that they they get together, they refresh, and I think you know Luke Thompson at his best is exactly what they need and I'm very thankful that it looks like he's going to play some part this year I don't know if this is true or not you might know the full story but was it him and Willie Mason came together at training and is that how he got injured I believe I, that's that's what the the the, the story's doing the Willie's still got it maybe he needs to lace on the boots and get back out there for the doggies <laughs> um, but you talk about those new players Reed Marnie Viliama Kikau Ryan Sutton, Hayes Perham, another one of those young players who's come over. It's going to be interesting, that spine. Hayes Perham, we saw him at fullback, obviously, in the Indigenous All-Stars game, and we also um, saw him in the trial, the second trial. Do you like what you see from him? Obviously, he's a young player, but um, seems like he's probably got a lot of developing to do. Yeah, um, he, he sure does, but there's a lot of raw potential there. Fullback's such an important position. Um, and, and obviously, we know the importance of each team's spine. I think Reed Marnie... Um, Matt Burton, they're two absolute standouts. 
one, one person you, you you hadn't mentioned and probably had been forgotten about for such a long time is, is young Kyle Flanagan. I mm. think we forget how young he is, um, you know, and playing in such a demanding, difficult position at halfback in a team that's losing. You know, it, it's a difficult task, and you know he's I think he's got a, a real genuine opportunity this year. I think he's going to try and nail down that seven role, and um, yeah, the pressure comes with it. But I'm expecting big things from him, and I think he he'll he'll complement um, Burton and Marnie as well. And you know, with, with Hayes at the back, I think that that spine it will uh, it will surprise a few teams, and I'm. I'd be delighted for Carl because he, he gets a lot of criticism, a lot, and I think he's pretty determined to to prove everybody wrong. I won't ask you if they're in your top eight because we are going to get your top eight in very shortly, but Cameron Serrato is obviously the big story around the doggies as well and the guys he's got around him. Like Willie Mason, like joking about it before, but like that's a really good guy to have around. Also, um, Andrew Ryan, yourself. Yeah, like Mark O'Mealy as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a real connection to the past and... Um, Cam, I, I've, I've watched him now uh, a couple of times, and he and obviously he's been on our show, and you can see why um, he was such a man in demand. You know, yeah, he was the assistant coach at you know the back-to-back champions, but you know, there's there's a reason why he was so sought after. You can see that when you meet him, when you're up close, when you watch him work. Uh, and and he knows that that this is a challenge. This isn't an instant fix at the Bulldogs. This isn't a a one year project. And and even listening to to Gus, Gus Gould speak as well, um, you know he he knows it's it's not an overnight thing, and this isn't a you know an escalator to success. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. And there's there's still a lot of work to do. But um, I think everyone will will see a, a much improved Canterbury team this year based off off what um off, off Cam Seraldo alone. We'll move on to the Raiders then. Um a lot of people forget they actually made the top 8 last yes. year. They yeah. stuck into the 8. Yeah. Um they've obviously lost Josh Hodgson. He did play last year though. Yeah. So I mean you can't really count that. Adam Elliott Charles Nichol Klukstad, um, Ryan Sutton, and they haven't done much on the signing front except for um, Danny Levi and Pasami Solo. Um, it's hard to sort of know where the Raiders are at. Personally, I think if you had to pick a team that would fall out of a top eight that made it last year, it's probably the Canberra Raiders. Um, but obviously, they've got Ricky Stewart there. He's one of the best coaches in the game. But how do you see them this year? Yeah, it, it it's a difficult one, the Raiders, because they just sort of go about their own business. They're you know, quietly... Um down there in Canberra, they they don't get as much noise as probably what they deserve. Even when things things are going well, um, they had a really fine finish to the end of last season. They went on a, a heavy winning streak. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, the, the the signings don't, you know, they they don't they don't scream out. They, do they? don't scream out, no. and and you know some of the losses, obviously, you know Hodgson, but again, he's not he's been unfit for. A, a couple of years now and um yeah they I think they they faced a f- couple of injuries Savage savages out for the beginning of the season isn't he, he was you know a, a huge ball of just huge potential so I don't know about the Raiders it's um I think they'll be you know exactly like they were last year they'll just look for better consistency and that's what I think that'll be the message from coach Ricky Stewart is hey boys we know we can do it you know, I think there was a game last year where they beat Melbourne at home and they were on yeah. they were uh, all the Roosters sorry at home and they were on fire that they, they did beat Melbourne at home as yeah. well. Um wait, did they win did they beat Melbourne in finals week 1 or am I getting my games mixed I up think now? You're getting your games. I'm getting up. my years mixed you're up. You're getting your years mixed up. Wires you across. Are. Wires across, but I think that's what they need is consistency, yep. but just whether or not they've got the the team to do it. I'm I'm not sure the the jury's still out. The New Zealand Warriors, they um, are finally going to be back home for an entire football season. And I've seen a lot of people now talking about they want to see the Warriors bring back that, you know, that side of them where going to New Zealand is hard work. You know, yeah. you don't want to do that trip. You go there, it's cold, it's wet, and they're smashing you. And the players they brought in, Mitch, Barton, Mitch Barnett, he's a great signing. Jackson Ford, Maradini Akure, 
and then they've got some sort of more electric players in Tamari Martin, um, Charles Nuklukstad, Dylan Walker. Luke Metcalf is an interesting one to watch. Um, being at home, I think, is going to help them a lot. And round one, they've got the Newcastle Knights, but Warriors are some people's tip for the wooden spoon as well. So I don't, I don't think there'll be anywhere... It'd be hard to envisage them getting the spoon. I think, like you say, Charlie, their narrative this year is going to be we are back at home and their, their people, their fans are going to carry them through, make the atmosphere all about the Warriors, make those trips a dreaded trip. And they get the great opportunity to start that with Newcastle. You know, like you're not going there for a holiday. So mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to watching their performance against the Knights to see if they're going to, you know, dive into that narrative of like we need everyone behind us i think they're in wellington for round one so they're going to be heading across new zealand each and each and every week obviously most games will be in uh in auckland but um yeah the, the warriors have got to make it about the atmosphere that they can generate and no one's really talking about andrew webster yes as well it, like he was yeah. a key part of uh putting together penrith's attack so that's he could be a really good coach for them. Yeah, absolutely, he could be. Yeah, he's, he's sort of the he was a shock signing yeah, announcement when you looked at some of the more experienced coaches that were available. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Warriors announced Webster, which was kind of a bit, I guess, you know, being honest, a bit left field, but yeah. you know, a surprise. Some people thought the journal Andrew Webster was yeah. getting around. <laughs> like it was, coach. it was, it was a it was a genuine surprise when you when you look at some of the coaches in waiting, but you know he's. They've obviously done their homework and, um, yeah, again, like Cam Serraldo involved in that system. He knows what success looks like and if he was part of their attack, then, yeah, obviously he doesn't have the same attacking weapons at his disposal there, but, yeah, look to see a much improved Warriors. Before we move on to the Dragons, I just received a note from Tony. The Raiders actually did beat Melbourne week one of finals in Melbourne. How crazy is that we've forgotten that it was only about six months, a few months ago, really? That's wild. Yeah, that, yeah, that is. Because um, that's not the first time they've beaten No, nah, they're not. They beat them when Johnny Bateman scored yeah, a try. Yeah. On the, that was yeah, that, a few yeah. years ago back now. But yeah, they, they went down there and one week won a finals. Mm, they did. Anyway, we'll see how they go this year. But the Dragons, they could be your wooden spoon. I'm not sure. But they've owned, they haven't really signed anyone apart from Jacob Little and Ben Murdoch Masilla. They've lost some sort of those old heads they had out there in Tarek Sims, Josh McGuire, Andrew McCulloch. Um, the vibe around the club isn't great. Look, everyone is piling on the Dragons. And again, I spoke about narrative. Like for me, if I'm in there, I'm saying everyone hates us. No one gives us a chance. Let's go and prove everybody wrong. And people will point to the evidence and go, well, yeah, well, what have you got? You know, you've had all these off-field incidences happen. You know, they're going to be without Amone um, for an extended period of time. But for me, what I'd be saying if I was there, boys, like, we have got to go against everybody. Like, it's us against them. They can't wait for us to fail. And then also, if you look back at last year, they were actually 12 and 12, which... Not that bad. Which, it actually, it gets you into the finals. If, if most you look, years. Yeah, most, yeah, most years. years. So... They should be looking at that and going, we, we can do this. Like the staff there should be saying, we can do this. We can, you know, we need to win a few more games, but we've got, we've got enough evidence there to suggest that we can do something. Like, do I think they'll make the eight? Probably not, but that's what they should be saying to each other. And I think, you know, last year, there was probably an over-reliance on Ben Hunt to perform. Like, he was carrying them, and mm. he was, you know, up there with the, the best in the competition. But I think I'd like to see some of the players around them, you know, take take some responsibility. And, and, and even you look at a guy, like, whether or not that's a coaching style whether, or, or a game plan where Benny's B Benny is on ball and he gets the ball all the time. But I, I'd like to, to see some of the forwards play with the ball a little bit more which is something that they probably didn't do Jack DeBellin needs a big year probably Sloan as well like you know we we, we spoke about a, co a couple of the young fullbacks and um, Sloan needs a big big year like again another huge ball of potential um, 
we we saw how you know visibly upset he was after the um, after the charity shield in Mudgee, but he'll learn from that and he'll be so much better. And I think that's what the narrative of the dragons will be, whether they will do that or not. Um, time will tell. You know, it's tough, guys. Like, getting compared to Greg Inglis oh. when you haven't really you've barely played any first grade, and a Greg Greg Inglis is a guy who players get compared to a lot. It's like Greg Inglis is like one of the greatest players that's ever played NRL. Yes. The, calm down the comparisons like yeah. leave the kid alone like let him just find his feet let like, him be Tyrell Sloan exactly not everyone is going to be Greg Inglis no. and that's okay yeah, 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 he's one of the greats yeah like, 100% Charlie I, could, yeah, I couldn't agree with you anymore um, let's move on then to the questions Jimmy we put it out there on our socials at the buy round and um, plenty of questions coming through with the new season starting but the first one I want to get, get your um, thoughts on is from Mac who says Jimmy I was watching NRL 360 this, year, this week and didn't see you on it Will you be back? Uh, yeah, Mac, um, no. Um, I, I really enjoyed um, my time uh, for the past couple of years at, at Fox and, and 360 especially, but I uh, know we, we, we couldn't get a deal together and um, we just sort of gone our separate ways really. So uh, no, won't be on 360 this year, unfortunately. But like I say, there's no, there's no hard feelings there. Um, there's no real fallout, it just, yeah, it just didn't happen. Um, we just yeah couldn't couldn't agree on a couple of things and sort of shook hands and yeah parted ways. But means maybe you know maybe some more podcast Charlie. Some more buy around content. Yeah, some more buy around content. There's always the positives. There is always the positives, mate. It's a shame. I love seeing that show. So that is a shame. But um, we've also got another one here from Jimmy who wants to know Jimmy, who's your top eight this this year? Yeah, I actually. You, uh, You've got it. I had to 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 write this down. Well, it, it's so, harder than it sounds, mate, isn't it? That it is. Yeah, it is, and you make a case, and it is difficult, mate. It, th- there's no two ways about it. So, I've gone in. I'm not gonna. I'm. Just, I'm gonna say the top four, and then the the bottom four. You gotta have it in order, though. This isn't a. Do I don't, you well, gotta I've, have well, it in I've, order? Well, don't, I don't have it in order. We're so gonna I've, have to put it in order on the fly here. On the fly. All right. We've got Roosters, Penrith. I'll go Cronulla Cowboys. Cowboys, wow. No South in the top four. Then I'll go South, Souths, Storm, Dogs, Para. Okay. So Raiders have fallen out. Yeah. Oh, don't ask me this. And the Dogs have come in. Don't ask me who's You're the Dogs in seventh. Yes. I think, is that because you work there? You have to do that. Is that part of your deal? Hey, I've seen the evidence. You seen the evidence? In I've seen the, the evidence. I, no, I do. I, I'm very optimistic about the. Um, yeah, and yeah, I do work. It's a big there, improvement, so. though. It is to make for them to make the top eight. They've obviously made signs, but then like, how do they make the top eight when there's so many good teams? Like with the well, again, yeah. How do they make it through hard work, through atmosphere around the <laughs> club, through getting people like me in? Yeah, you're the difference. No, <laughs> um, um, I'm not. But uh, look, I, I I do think there's a, there's enough there at, at Canterbury to to make the eight this year. And yeah, look, I am biased. I did skip at the club and I do work there. Yeah, I make no apologies for that. You, yeah. Do you, you had the sharks in there though, didn't you? you? Had them in your top four. Yeah, yeah. The the thing with the dogs is, I think that spine is going to be where it maybe unravels for them because also the depth isn't there. Like if you lose a guy like Reed Marnie. Like that, Farmonu Brown comes in. Yeah, well, yeah, mate, I know, I know. If ifs and buts, mate. You know what? I think you can write this about every team where you go. Yeah, but if they lose this player, what are they going to do? Like, yeah. what are the Sharks going to do when they, if the, Nico Hines isn't playing? Right, what what they going to do? Brain it's like trindle. you just crack on with it. Yeah, you just get on with it. Like, yeah. But the Dogs don't have the same depth as some of those other teams, and you also haven't got the Broncos in there. No, I've, I, well, you have. To, Mate, that's it. You, uh, the, there's nine teams I've not got in there, Charlie. Because <laughs> this is why it's called making a top eight. Do you want to uh, go through every team I've not got in there? Yeah, we could yeah, do yeah. that. But that's what the season review is all about. Yeah. So, like, yeah, no, I, um, yeah, I have to leave them out. Well, let's do the same game multi to finish. We've obviously got our the absolute legends at Ladbrokes who have jumped on board, and we are going to be going sort of head to head each week in the same game multi we won't be doing the same game but we'll see who oh, comes we'll out clocking, on top yeah we're clocking yeah. up who's uh 
Who's on top? Who's got the chocolates? You go first, Jimmy. Yeah, so this week, my same game multi. I've gone four legs. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so Cowboys to win, minus seven and a half. Yep. Murray to Alangi, anytime. Like that. And then Cowboys to win the first half. And then the big six again, Cowboys to win the second half. So that's coming in as it stands at the fabulous... I've got to say, this is a great app. Yeah. The Cow... The lab brokes. Yeah. Very easy uh, to use. Very I would recommend downloading. Especially it. for same game multis. Yes. Yeah. Like you can, because sometimes you're like, is that part of a same game? And there's just a, a separate section. Yeah. Brilliant. And you no. can also use the, um, follow the, the popular ones as well. Yes, you can. Which yeah. I might be doing tonight for the Eels game, just quietly. Mm. So but, that, that is $3.90 as it currently Yeah, stands. that's good. That's good. So you think the Cowboys might pump the Raiders in the first game then? Well, that's why I've gone with. Cowboys minus seven and a half. Yeah, no, I like it, Jimmy. I like it. So I'm going to be doing the Souths Sharks game, and I'm actually very bullish on Souths this year. If I was doing a premiership tip, they'd be my premiership tip. I'm not. I'm actually really? a Roosters fan, by the way, so I'm not a Souths man. So um, that's not why. But I'm. I just think they're going to be fantastic. I think Latrell Mitchell takes a leap. I think their spine, that cohesion they've got there, is just. It's just something that some of the other teams haven't got. Um, and my bet is going to be the Rabbitohs minus five and a half. Anytime try scorer Alex Johnson and anytime try scorer Ronaldo Militalo. And that one is three legs, paying a much more exciting seven dollars thirty five. But if you are going to follow that, gamble responsibly. Yeah, obviously. absolutely. As always, Matt, it's a it's an interesting one. That that game I mm. think is the is the is the pick of the game. It's a shame it's, Hines isn't playing. Yeah, it is. But mate, I've actually tipped Cronulla. Have you? Yeah. Interesting. At Shark Park, I think yeah. the game is, yeah. I, I, yeah, I like it, liking the Sharks. And, and that's not to say I don't like South, but I know Hines is a massive out, but I, I, I reckon the Sharks will beat them. Well, it's a fantastic first weekend of footy. Tonight, the Storm Eels, that's going to be an amazing oh, game. Man, yeah. At Combank Stadium, you're going to go out there for it? Yeah, I'll be there, mate. Calling yeah. for Triple N. Ah, brilliant. Yes. Fantastic. That probably wraps yeah. us up, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, thanks everybody to... Tuning in, listening, watching uh, Midweek Matters. So, yeah, thanks for watching.